have several safety features in the event that uh, we had to do an off-airport landing. Uh, and that's a nice way of saying uh, uh, crash landing. Uh, we can do several things. Uh, we can establish bus glide in this aircraft, and uh, the Cirrus in the perspective shows you that speed right there where VG, all right, and you just establish that airspeed right there. You can use your trim at that point in time. Uh, above 3,000 feet for me is where I'll start doing checklist. Below 3,000 feet, I'll establish best glide and start looking for a good place to land. Uh, above 3,000 feet, we'll uh, establish best glide, and then we'll go through all our checklist and everything. In the event that we cannot get the airport, uh, the airplane uh, engine cranked back up, uh, we have caps available, and uh, it is available uh, above 600 feet. And all you do is just pull this cover back right here, grab a hold of the handle with both hands, give it a pull. The earlier models of the caps handles and the earlier models of Cirrus, uh, because of the 200 pound uh, useful load increase, uh, they had to have a larger diameter parachute installed on this aircraft. And so uh, the old caps deployment was at 400 feet. These are at 600 feet. And uh, you want to be below uh, maneuvering speed, uh, 140 knots for deployment. Although they have had deployments at higher air speeds, to where uh, they did survive. Uh, they do have a couple of deployments that were well above that. They were they lost control of the airplane, and uh, it was far beyond the, the capabilities of the, the cap system. Um, and tighten your seat belts. Make sure, of course, if your engine was not producing any power, you'd want to stow it, pull the throttle back, close your you know, fuel cut off, boost pumps off, and go ahead and turn your fuel off. Uh, you can also activate your ELT down there by the floor and uh, contact whoever the approach control and facilities or go to the uh, uh, emergency frequency 121.5. The, the Cirrus perspective system is really nice because as you climb out, uh, certain model Cirruses will actually, they have an altitude compensating uh, fuel system. And what that means basically is as we climb out, when we set the power setting, it will automatically adjust the, the fuel flow. When you set it at the top of the green, uh, it will maintain that all the way for the climb and for the descent. These, these particular models do not. Um, it is the turbocharged models, I believe, um, that have that altitude compensate fuel system. But nevertheless, it is still easy just to make sure that the little indicator is right there at the top of the green. Uh, the, the system is programmed to where every 30 minutes it'll give you an alarm to let you know that you need to change fuel tanks. And Cirrus is set up to where to, to actually shut the fuel off you have to pull this lever up and spin it backwards to prevent you from actually accidentally shutting the fuel flow off to the engine. Uh, and it's either on left or right tank so there's no uh, risk of, oh wait a second, I put it in the middle and we ran out of fuel. We also have uh, XM Music, uh, all the different features. Uh, this is our different pages that we have in the Garmin. Uh, this is the map section right here. We have a navigation map. We have a traffic map that will show all the traffic that's around us. Uh, weather data link. All right, notice it will even show clouds and all the different Echo Tops, Minitar, Legends, everything like that. Uh, Talls, uh, Terrain, Warning System. And then we'll go to the Waypoint page. Uh, airport Information, Greensboro, anything you need to know about this airport. Runway length, hard surfaces, frequencies and everything are available for you right here. To load that frequency up, if we wanted to take it and load that up into uh, COM2, we could take it and uh, put that frequency right here. 
Unicom. Three point zero, and then it'll automatically load the secondary frequency. Um, the the FMS system on the, the Sirius, you can actually take it and operate everything for each individual, uh, the primary flight display and the multifunction display from the FMS system. See how the indicator that's indicating that we need to switch fuel tanks. We will confirm that it is saying that, and we notice that it does need to. It. We'll watch the fuel flow as we switch fuel tanks and make sure that the fuel flow does not drop to zero, listening for anything, any type of indication in the engine that it was uh, starving for fuel. And then we'll just hit the alerts. All right, we're level at 9,000 feet. So we'll take it and we'll go ahead and go back to the uh, engine phase, engine page, and we'll hit the assist right here. And our power is at 76%. Uh, that's a good power percentage, 75-76% uh, whenever you go into lean of peak. As we pull this back here, we're going to watch the exhaust gas temperatures, and they're going to start to rise. And we're looking for delta, and then it will come back 50 degrees. We should be somewhere around about 13.8 gallons per hour, somewhere around in there. Niner Kilo Golf Contact, Lafayette Approach, 128.7, g'day. 28.7, uh, This is also, the next page that we go to is the uh, NDB information. Uh, all the different waypoints that this airplane, all the VORs are, are close to it. User waypoint, if we stored any user waypoints in here, it has that. All right, we're going to move down to the auxiliary page. All right, all your trip information that you have, uh, total endurance, fuel remaining, and uh, remaining endurance, okay, three hours, 55 minutes. Fuel required, total range, 583. All right, your next page. Uh, we have timers and everything that we can set up. It even has an odometer, like a car. Uh, ground speed. Uh, this is where you can put in your messages. Switch, okay, this one's set up for every 25 minutes, and we're 17 minutes into the, the timer. Uh, this is all your GPU information, uh, GPS, I'm sorry. And uh, we have two GPS units, LRUs in this airplane, GPS-1 and GPS-2 for backup systems. Uh, it is required if this airplane was in 135 operations to have redundant systems. And so Cirrus uh, set up, it, is, it has many redundant systems in it. Uh, because of that reason. Okay. Uh, you can actually buy the Cirrus without them, but uh, we elected uh, whenever we did it and put the package together, and it actually saved us money by building this particular package. Uh, uh, when you're shooting an approach, let's say we were flying to an airport where we were going to shoot and a, a GPS approach into it, there's a feature where we can go over here and we can compute the RAIN. To, to make sure we have receiver autonomous integrity monitoring. That allows us to be able to shoot that down an LPV approach. All right, uh, the system set up for configuration, all your different things that you want to have. This is that user configuration. When we started the aircraft up, it had some profiles down here on the right, and uh, you can take it and, and set the configuration. Let's say you don't like the little uh, magenta boxes around. You can turn those off, and it'll set up the configuration how you like it in this aircraft. XM radio. This is the handy-dandy feature that uh, everybody really likes. Uh, we have XM radio. And so uh, I look for the day where they can uh, put the uh, MFD and we'll be able to watch a movie over here and uh, have our TV stations we could tune. Maybe have some uh, TVs and the headsets in the back. That'd be pretty neat. Uh, 
Uh, you can put all your presets and your volumes. Uh, a little bit later on in the flight, if you want to, we'll turn that on. Uh, auxiliary system status. This is where it shows all your monitorings, all the different LRUs. That, uh, that's the line replaceable units. And this is the video camera that we have on this airplane. Uh, mounted under the wing over here, we have a thermal imaging camera. So in the event we're coming into an airport at night and you, Not you know, it's the, the lighting's not real good. And the, on the airport facility directory, they say that they could possibly have deer in the area. So it is, and they will show up. If you go to the Sirius website, they have pictures of deer when they're coming in for a landing. The deer showing up, and it's, you know, with thermal imaging, it's going to be a white hot image on the screen. All right, this is all our flight plan and everything right there. Uh,